integration. So the last unit of calculus was actually figured out much earlier than the first units of calculus. So when we talk about derivatives, we talk about Newton, we talk about the 171800 1800s. Now we can go back to the Greeks and Archimedes with integration. Now, the start of integration was about finding area, area underneath a curve. And it wasn't realized until later that integration and derivatives were really connected to each other. So one of the things that we're going to be able to do in this unit is find areas that we couldn't find before. Like, what's the area in between two parabolas? The indefinite integral, also sometimes called anti-differentiation, doesn't mean that you don't like differentiation. It's just the opposite of it, the reverse process. So early on in our notes, I would sometimes have a little thing that said, work backwards. We were actually doing the last unit. Working backwards is just doing the integral. So if you had, the derivative was 2x. What could possibly be the original function? Well, it could be x squared. That's one possibility. That's not the only possibility. Can you see that it could also be x squared plus 5? Yeah. Or plus, look at this transition, 51. There could be multiple numbers that we could put there because when you take the derivative of a constant, it would go away. So we will learn in this unit that we will often write it like this, saying it could be any number. So we'll write a plus c for the indefinite integral. And that's part of the reason why it's called indefinite, not defined, because you don't know exactly what C is. If it was like, for sure you knew C was 51, then you'd be like, that's indefinite for sure that this is right. But when you don't know what that last number could be, that's why it's called the indefinite integral. In order to find that, they would have to give us a little bit more information. So we have this idea of plus c. We call that the antiderivative. And we learn the new symbol for how to go backwards to find the original function. We have the integral sign, which is like a super long skinny s. Kind of like what you see on a violin. Right? Any violin players? Homework. <laughs> By next class, someone needs to become a violin and play it through the cycle. Ooh, that would be probably fun. Okay. So we call what we have inside the integrand, and we have in an integral this notation, this dx. This dx tells you which variable your integrand. So just like you have dy dx, it's finding the derivative with respect to x. In an integral, we have a dx to tell you which integral you need to find. So interestingly, we sort of have a bit of Leibniz notation in the integral. We don't have any of uh, Newton's notation really come up. So Leibniz's notation is useful here in the integral. So what we find is if you were doing the integral, then f of x would be whatever function it is that would give you that, and you always have to go plus c. And if you wanted to, you could label that c could be any real number. It's a little diagram. Right? If you have a function, 
If you differentiate, you go to the derivative. If you anti-differentiate, you go to the antiderivative. And there's sort of a forwards and backwards. And with anything, the reason we learn integration last is anytime you're working backwards, it's usually a little bit more difficult, right? If you think about when you had to multiply two things, you're like, oh, I learned the arrows and I combined my like terms. And then we introduced working backwards as factoring. And you were like, oh, factoring is harder than just multiplying things up. Everything you've learned in mathematics, usually learn the easy way first, and then something that's a little bit harder. Elementary school, started with adding, got really good at adding. Then you had to subtract, and you're like, oh, it was hard. And then you went to multiplying, which is harder than subtracting. So you're like, got good at multiplying, and then it was like dividing. You're like, oh, this is tough. So undoing things is always a little bit harder. So that's why integration is taught last. So we just have to undo things. Every rule that we have, there's a possibility that we can undo it. Some rules are not easy to undo, especially if someone was so rude and simplified. Right? It's easy to see things when they're in their right form to work backwards, but if then someone took some extra time and simplified it, then it's like, oh my goodness. Now I can't work backwards anymore. So if we think about the process, we just have to undo that process to figure out our new rules for integration. So here's a power rule, right? You remember you brought the 5 out in front and multiplied it, and then subtracted 1 from the exponent. So now we go through this and undo that. So instead of subtracting 1 from the exponent, we added 1. So these are questions from our first unit, just copied and pasted. You might remember, you're like, oh, this was easy because you added 1 to the exponent, and then you didn't write the 5 out in front. And we wrote it, our answer that way. What we're going to find out in this unit is when you're actually working backwards, here you could see that the 5 went out and just made it go away. Probably the same thing here. You put the 3 there and then said to yourself, well, what would have been in front? It would have to be a 4. And that's good if you can do the mental math, but if all of a sudden the numbers are a little bit awkward, like if I told you to work backwards from that one, all of a sudden it's like, oh, the mental math isn't as nice. So what we do is we develop a technique that says, well, working forwards, I multiplied and subtracted one from the exponent, right? Now working backwards, I'm going to add one to the exponent, and instead of multiplying, divide. So I kept my original number there and said if I need to undo something, I need to divide. Now that 5 divided by 5 went away and you could see that easily. Here, same thing. If I add 1 to the exponent and then divide, I get the 4 that way as well. But where it becomes nice is on ones that it's not as easy to see. I add 1 to the exponent and divide. Now I've got some work I can do. A fraction divided by a fraction, I can multiply by the reciprocal. 3 fifths times 7 ninths is 21 40 fifths. And yeah, I'm sure that was just on the tip of your tongue, right? 21 40 fifths. Not as easy to see, but if we develop a technique, then we can do the mathematics and adjust to that. So all we're doing is undoing what we did before 
and undoing the subtract one from the exponent would be add one to the exponent, and undoing the multiplying the front by the five would be dividing by five. So we can do that all the way through, and now we have a technique for getting our power rule backwards. Add one to the exponent, that's the opposite of subtracting, then divide by that new exponent, which was the opposite of multiplying. And what we then do in all of these work backwards ones, and partially because it said find a function, you could write any one that you want. But when we do the antiderivative, we're going to find out, we're going to add plus c to each of these to show that there could have been a constant at the end. So formally writing this out as a rule looks like this. If you have the power rule, you add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent to get the opposite of that multiplying power. You can always double check these by finding the derivative after you work backwards. If you find the derivative after you work backwards and you come out with what you started with, then you know that you've got it right. And what we didn't have in our first set of questions working backwards were not nice numbers in front. I never gave you like an 11. It's not that 11s aren't nice. But in this situation, it's like, oh, what do I do? So in this case, if I write it more red, if I write it out, this would be the notation, finding the indefinite integral of 11x to the 5 with respect to x would equal And you will forget the plus c. I've had people very get their test and they're right at the top of it, plus c. And then, inevitably, there are some questions where you don't have to write plus c, and then you'll write plus c on those. So, whenever there could have been a number at the end, we write a plus c. Integrate with respect to x, so this means if we want to write it out, we would have x to the negative 3 kx. And you remember how you got so good at adding one or subtracting one from the exponent? Now you have to get good at adding one to the exponent. And you're going to get confused sometimes and you'll be like, should I add one or sub should I subtract one? What does that do? Especially when there's negatives. If you add one to the exponent, do you see that you would get a negative 2? And then you would have to divide by negative 2 plus c. And this one is missing. We added in. It should have a dx there. You always need to have in an integral what variable you're deciding to integrate with. So just like in derivatives, take the time to change this to an extra hash. This then would equal add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent plus c. And dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So we have a lot of the same ideas and strategies from before, but now 
we're working backwards. And that's just enough to, like, you have to keep your brain on straight. Because some of your questions on your IB exam, they're going to be like, hey, can you work forward? Now can you work backwards? Can you work forwards for a bit and work backwards for a bit? And just back and forth and back and forth. And then your brain is like, oh. So you have to keep things straight. <clears throat> So here it says, find the integral of y dx if y equals that. So that means I can substitute in, instead of y, I can write x to the 3 7th dx. Add 1 to my exponent. Dividing by a fraction is multiplying by a reciprocal. There's our basic integration of our power rule. Our other rules that we have. Well, do you remember that if you were adding and subtracting a bunch of things, you could do the derivative of each of them separately? So then, if you could do the derivative of each of them separately, if you were working backwards and you were adding and subtracting things, then you could integrate each of them separately. And you only have to write a plus C once. So for example, here, if I integrate the x to the 5, I get x to the 6 over 6. If I integrate the x, it would be squared over squared, plus squared over 2. And then the 2 would be plus 2x, and then I would add my plus c. Example 2, well, in its form right now, did we ever have a derivative where the answer was two things multiplied by each other? Was there any a derivative rule that was exactly that? No. Our, like, we had a product rule for derivatives, but when you did a product rule for derivatives, you ended up with four things. Kept one the same derivative of the other, plus kept the other same derivative first. Not just two things. So right now, we don't have a derivative rule that ends with two things. So we have to think, well, what could I do with this? Can I get this into a form? If I multiply this out, now it's in a form that I could integrate. And integration does more of this where you have to manipulate more than derivatives. Add one to the exponent and divide. Add one to the exponent and divide. What's going to be interesting? Okay, I'll finish this question up. The 4x. Obviously, this reduces to 2x squared. What you're going to find interesting is when I asked you earlier to work backwards, and when we did our derivatives unit, you would have seen the 4x and automatically in your head written down 2x squared. But now that you've learned the technique, I guarantee you will stop doing that and always write 4x squared over 2. Because as a technique, the technique works all the time and it's easy. And you're just going to get into a group of using the technique. And even though you could have done this in your head to be 2x squared the way that you would have done it before, now that you've seen the technique, you're like, oh, technique makes so much sense, you won't even think about it, and you'll do it this way. Yes, you don't have to simplify that if you don't want to. That's perfectly fine. So 
So we had to change this first to something that we could integrate. There isn't a quotient rule for integrations. So how do we do this? How do we find the integral of x squared minus 6x plus 8 over x minus 2 with respect to x? We have to manipulate this. You might notice, hey, I think I could factor this out. x minus 2's cancel out. Then you're just integrating x minus 4. So the integral of x as 1 to the exponent to the minus integral over minus 4 plus c. I think I just paused it. I don't know. Right at the beginning of the lesson. Another great video waiting for a multitude of likes. see it now. Five years from now, they hold a special party. Mr. JR has officially gotten 30 likes on YouTube. <laughs> I'm telling you, math videos, it's a hard sell. And now the government's a Banning TikTok. I think I might have to switch over to TikTok to see if I get more. Could be quite lucrative. I think. Now, here's an interesting rule. If you took the integrals of the derivative, does it make sense that you would get the original function back? Because the integral undoes the derivative, and if you had the derivative and then you undid that, you would just get back to what you originally had. So, this question is asking us to find the integral of the derivative of 5x squared. Order of operations would say, well, inside the integral, I have something to do. This means, in the blue box here, which is black. No, you're not going colorblind. Why can't I use my hands? So, order of operations say we should do what's in that blue box first. So, I would now have, well, how do I find the derivative? That would be 2 would come up in front, that would be a 10x, and then I still have 8. 
And now I can integrate. So like, oh, how do I work backwards here? What would I possibly have to start with? I'm going to have to add one to the exponent and divide. Let's see. Oh, it's 5x squared. So it should make sense that integrating the derivative would just undo each other, and you would get back to where you started from. However, it is slightly different than this, doing the derivative of the integral. Can you see the slight difference? So here, this one says, right, oh, hold on, kind of keep, this is what's inside. I have to do that first. Cancel the log side. I want to find the derivative of, I would do this first, which means I would add one to the exponent and divide and then go plus c. That would be first. And now I have to do the derivative of that. Okay, so the derivative of this, I need to bring the negative 2 out in front. Oh, that's going to cancel out nicely with this negative 2. And subtract 1 from the exponent. But can you see in this one, there would be no plus c. Because now I take the derivative of a number, that would be 0. So if you do the integral last, you'd have a plus c. If you did the derivative last, you wouldn't have that plus c. So they yes, they undo each other, but they're not exactly the same. One of them would have a plus c. The other one would have a plus c temporarily, but then when you do the derivative, that plus c would go away. Either way, the shortcut is recognizing, okay, they cancel each other out, and now I just have to determine, well, which one did I do last? Did I integrate last? Then I need a plus c. If I found the derivative last, then I wouldn't.